Hello everyone, my name is Brian Trump and I welcome you to a presentation on cold water immersion as a recovery modality for sports and exercise. Individuals train to improve performance or compete to win championships. This cycle of stress and recovery causes physiological responses in the body. Coaches, athletes, and athletic trainers recommend recovery to continue positive adaptations in performance. Several modalities are utilized within an athlete's comprehensive recovery program. Some of these modalities are rest, massage, cryotherapy, specifically cold water immersion. Cold water immersion is one such recovery modality that is continually recommended, so much that teams will set up portable pools for large groups within hotels. It has been studied extensively in many domains such as running, team sports like soccer and rugby, and resistance training. However, within the literature, the results have been equivocal. Coaches and athletes specifically utilize this cold water immersion to attenuate areas that lead to fatigue, overreaching, and possible overtraining. In principle, delaying these areas or speeding up the recovery process for subsequent sessions could lead to one's ability to train at higher intensities or sustain previous intensities. Some of the areas that can limit performance are delayed onset muscle soreness, neuromuscular fatigue, and high body temperatures or hot body temp or from hot environments that could lead to dysfunction with the contra contractile units of the muscle. So what does the literature say? Well there are some studies that have shown no effect on performance benefits after using cold water immersion as a recovery intervention. One, su one such study of 40 healthy male and female subjects showed no significant differences between the intervention and control group. The treatment variables are very important here. There was only three minutes in the immersion. Temperatures were within recommendations up to the waistline, but only one treatment. In 18 physically active females who used 10 sets of 10 counter movement jumps showed no beneficial effects. Treatment variables here were 10 minute immersions with, te with temperatures at 10 degrees Celsius up to the waist waistline with only one treatment. In contrast to the studies with no effect, there is literature that demonstrates a positive effect. 50 healthy male and females did show a perceived effect that was lower up to 10 to 20 percent than the control with DOMS and the treatment variables here are important with 10 minutes immersion with very low temperatures however there were three consecutive treatments so frequency is very important. 20 well-trained college rugby players did show decreases in perceived fatigue and no reduction in performance measures. Again, 10 minutes immersion and 15 degrees Celsius. However, the whole body was covered up to the head and neck, up to the neck, and it was one treatment. Some additional support for cold water immersion. 20 junior male so soccer players after a soccer match showed lower perceived neuromuscular fatigue 24 and 48 hours post-match. Again, treatment variables, 10 minutes immersion, 10 degrees Celsius to the waistline. And in another such study, this one was taken with nine well-trained males in intermittent sprints in very hot temperatures showed that there was improved neuromuscular contractile function. Again, treatment variables, 10 minutes immersion, temperatures of 10 degrees Celsius, and one treatment. So what can we take away? Well, future research is definitely still needed to continue to develop a best practices model for each particular sporting endeavor. I think there needs to be something to determine how it works in males and females, and obviously the specificity of the sports. But what we can take away from the current literature is that current recommendations can be helpful with treatment variables that fall within temperatures of 5 to 12 degrees Celsius, duration of at least 10 minutes. The anatomical region should be all of the area that has been shown to be exercised, and the frequency this seems to be if we can do more could be better but it is an equivocal finding in that one treatment or more like three treatments could be beneficial 
So what do we take away is that cold water immersion can be an effective recovery modality if tolerable by the athlete. Thank you for watching and I'm loving to hear your comments and feedback on this presentation.